Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Bible study today, understanding God's ways, because that's Colossians 1, 9 wisdom, which we kind of have been camped on that. So we're going to dive in today, understanding God's ways. I have a number of scriptures. I'm going to tell them to you. They're also in the thread on the Bible study line. So if you want to go back and study them, they're located there. But we're going to go to, um, we're going to be in Nehemiah 2 today. Then we're going to be looking at um, Luke 14, 28, Proverbs 16, 9, 15, 14, and Jeremiah 29, 11. I bet everybody knows what that one says. Yeah. Everybody should nod their head here. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Um. Okay, so I want to tell a couple of things um, before we get started housekeeping-wise. We're going to have Bible study here next week, and then after that, we're going to skip it for two weeks. That's Thanksgiving and the week after. So the 23rd and the 30th, it's no Bible study, okay? The 23rd and the 30th, no Bible study. And then the following, which would probably be, what, the 37th, I guess. <clears throat> no, that wouldn't be the 37th. Hello. Who is laughing and going, no, girl. <laughs> Okay, so what would that be about the 7th? Whatever yeah, the next yeah, the Thursday seventh. is. That is okay. the 7th. Um, <laughs> we will have our last. I'm just going to go ahead and that's our last and final one for the season. And we're going to do a Christmas party for the ones that are here. at. So some of y'all are online. I know a lot of y'all, you know, you're welcome to fly in. Though. <laughs> we would love to have you. Um, so we will do the Bible study at 930. But for everybody else, if y'all want to come at 830, we will... Um, we're going to have a gift exchange and some holiday cheer. So, um, but we'll see you at 930 on the 7th, and then it'll be um, on for the holidays. On for the holidays. We're just sitting here talking about how much we're loving the holidays. Who loves the holidays? Give me a thumbs up in, this, in the threads here. Who loves the holidays? Everybody here? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's loving the holidays. Awesome. Okay, so today we're going to, um, the recap is we were studying God's ways with Nehemiah. Nehemiah prayed. He was positioned through his prayers, so your prayers matter. They count. God moves on your prayers. Um, then he, when he was positioned, he found favor with the king. We looked at that, a worldly king. So be open-minded. You don't know how God's going to do it. It's not necessarily, necessarily the way you expect it. And then we looked at, after he was positioned, um, today we're going to look at what did God provide everything he needed. So we're going to pick up in uh, chapter two. And then today we're going to camp on he got a plan. So you can have all these in place. And we, we studied at length last week about wisdom. So he got some wisdom from the Lord. He's got some knowledge. Now it's time to get a plan. Okay, so let me open with prayer and then we're going to pick up there. So, Lord, we just give you this time. We just praise you and we honor you. And, Lord, I just thank you that your people are hungry for your word, Lord, hungry to know your ways, Lord, not just to know them, Lord, but to apply them to their lives so that their lives during this time, people will see the fruit. They will see the joy. They will see your hand move, Lord, by um, observing our lives, Lord. That's our goal so that people can tell we're your disciple. And that they will come to know you. Lord, that's the goal. So to us, through us, and back to glorify you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give, like only you can, the Holy Spirit would give wisdom, revelation, and understanding. And help each person today to see where in my life do I need a plan. And so, Lord, we thank you and we honor you and we give you this time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to pick up it in chapter 2. Um, in the month, I'm just going to read and then I'll break it down. So in the month of Nisan, so we saw there that after you pray, it takes time because he's no, it's been four to five months. In the 20th year, when wine was before him, and why he's saying that is because he's, he was a cupbearer of the king. I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now, I had not been sad before in his presence. So then it goes to 2-2 two, two talks about him asking the king um, for provision, asking the king for favor. So if you skip to 2-4, the king said to me, what do you ask? And he said, I prayed to the God of heaven. So he's given glory to God, not the king, but the God can use the king of the world or God can use any person. So you want to just be open-minded to that, but it's always God's hand moving on your behalf. Verse 5, and I said to him, 
if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you will send me to Judah, to the city my fathers, where my fathers are, that I may rebuild it. So he's asking the king now, but he didn't just barge in and ask the king. He waited until timing was right, four to five months. He prayed, and then he actually allowed God quicken the heart of the king, and the king asked him. So he just knew, okay, now it's time. the time is right. So he's basically now asking the king, would you help me? The king besides whom the queen was sitting. I just want to camp on that. Anything in scripture has merit. Okay, the queen is sitting with the king. Now, we're not going to go deep here, but I would, as I was reading the word, I would go, hmm, isn't that interesting? Why did he put the, in there that the queen was with the king? So there's, it's showing that, um, there's a lot of things it's showing, okay? They would usually be sitting together. It's showing that um, how there's order in this kingdom where the king is king of everything, but he has his right hand, you know, is the queen. So there's, there's power in two. There's power in a marriage. There's power in agreement. So there's a lot of pieces that he was coming before, not just a king going behind the queen's back, but there was like so much power in that. Because he had prayed, because he trusted the Lord, not the king, now he was being positioned in front of them. You know, the Lord dropped in my spirit years ago. I was just just getting dressed, and which he, out of nowhere, he just says, um, go through the wingman. And I, I'm just like, what, what is a wingman? I didn't really know what a wingman was. And so I was like, go through the wingman. So as I was reading this this morning, he, he, was, he quickened my spirit, and he said, so somebody needs to hear this, um, the wingman is the right hand, the right hand of the um, the boss, the king, the one in charge. It's the one that knows everything about them, that has can give the doorway of opportunity. So in this season, you may think you're trying to get an appointment with somebody of influence. You're trying to get an appointment with who God's laid on your heart. But the wingman is the person that maybe wouldn't seem as important, but you may need to befriend them. You may need to go through them. So here you're looking at that. The queen was like the wingman. And so with that, um, with how this applies to your life, what we're looking at is there's going to be a person of influence that God's positioned you in front of. They may be a king in the world. They may be a boss. They may be somebody that knows other people. It's, It's not necessarily... Um, the king. It's broader than that. It's somebody that's in a higher position in you that has influence that um, can, that God is positioned for you to have favor with. Okay. So that's, I'm just kind of trying to like shake that up because it looks differently in everybody's life. Um, okay. So then the king asked him some logical questions. Okay. How long will your journey take? Now, this is the part where I'm saying to you, you, you want to get a plan. So let me just stop at this one little second here. Because this was mind-blowing to me personally because I had never intended to teach this at all with this study. But it just developed into this last week because the Lord said, I want you to camp on wisdom. All right, so when you go to Isaiah uh, eleven two, the spirit is uh, wisdom and understanding and counsel and might. So we're camped on counsel and might now. So counsel is plan. So let's look at the Strong's word of counsel in 1122. Can somebody look that up? Because I'm on my phone and I can't look it up. Can somebody go on their Strong's app? Do they have, do y'all have the Strong's app? Um, And see what 1122 says. Because I would like to see what, I want to read what counsel is. I didn't think about not being used to my phone because I'm usually on my laptop. It just occurred to me. So um, if not, I can run get my, my um, computer. Does anybody have it? Just mm-hmm. raise your hand. Now. It's 1122. 11 I'm sorry, 112. So what we're doing here is we're looking on that Strong's app to see exactly what, what the word counsel means. Because we can just come up with exactly what it means. Do you have Strong's mm-hmm. app? Mm-hmm. I'll go get it. Mm-hmm. I can do it. I can do it real quick. And so this is just a good reminder. You can get the Strong's app on your phone. And basically you look up the address, 11, Isaiah 11, 2. And then you just push on the word counsel. Okay, so, and it'll tell you what counsel means. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to 
Bible Hub. So I would just put Bible Hub, Isaiah 11, 2. So when you want to know what something means, this is how you find out. Bible Hub, comma, Isaiah 11, 2. And so I push on that, and then I go to Strong's. So literally, I'm going to just show y'all on here, so it'll be, I go to Strong's right here and push on Strong's. Let me see where Strong's is, right there, okay? And that's going to tell me what the word means. And then I scroll down, so it tells you what the spirit means. And then it tells you what uh, would rest on him, the spirit of wisdom. So it tell you what wisdom and of understanding but we're wanting to look, and here's counsel. So then I would press on counsel, and it's a Hebrew word, 6098. So I'm studying, what does counsel mean in Isaiah 11 two? Okay, so here's what it means. Well, counsel means advice. So you want to get wise counsel. You want to um, get someone, maybe a prayer partner, or somebody wiser in the word than you, or somebody wise, it's not always in scripture, that it is definitely always based in scripture, so I want to make real clear, don't take that out of context, but sometimes we need to investigate um, who's wise counsel, maybe like if you're looking for a new job, you might need wise counsel in that specific arena, somebody that knows that arena. If you're looking for wise counsel on opening a business, you want to find somebody that knows about that business. You wouldn't just ask your friend, well, what do you think? Should I open it? No, you ask the Lord and then you do your due diligence with wise counsel that knows that information in that area. Okay. So then I want to read, what else does this word mean in this particular context? It means advice, consultation, counselor, design, this is where I just want you to camp. If you didn't look this word up, you may never really get this piece. It says plan and plans and purpose. So whenever the second, so you're the menorah, <clears throat> it says to, um, in the second part, it says counsel and might. They go, remember, they go hand in hand. They're welded together. Counsel without the courage and the strength to carry it out is nothing but some good information. Courage to carry it out is a loaded gun if you haven't done your planning and your uh, consult, consultation, your due diligence. So whatever, how does this apply to my life? What is it that you're building right now in your life? It could be a relationship. It could be simply a relationship. It could be a business. It could be, um, I don't know, Lord, but I'm investigating some opportunities. What it, but God will quicken your spirit. You want to have counsel which is plans. This is the part I want you to really see is that this Nehemiah didn't just go, okay, well, I'm going to just tell the king I got to go and I'm just going to run on over there because that's some might, courage. I'm just going to get on the horse and buggy, get my men and go. No, he's, he's like, I got to get a plan first. Then I got to carry it out. Okay, so we're camping on plan and counsel. So here he is. He's talking to the king and he's in, so I'm in verse six. And he says, how long will this take? He's asking him some, some good questions here. And when will you return? So you, you need a timeline. These are basic things right here in scripture. So it pleased him to send me and he sent him a time. He set him a time. So he didn't just say, go do what you need to do. No, it's a business plan. Okay, good. It's going to take you six months, whatever the number was. And he's like, okay, then, you know, you got my blessing for that. Also, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given me for the governors that they may let me pass through Judah. So now the king is giving him a rite of passage. And in, in those days, you couldn't just go through different kingdoms. You, or the, you would be arrested. They wouldn't allow you to do it. You'd have to take the long way. So many things. But the king had influence. He had influence. So he gave him the letters he needed to go right straight through. Whenever God is giving you something to build, something to do, provision shows up. Uh, it, it, it's, there's no blocking. It may be something you have to persevere through, but it's released. You move through it. Everything gets in line. So we see that here. Um, if y'all are cold, y'all can click that. He, if y'all, it's a little cool. He is a hair cold, but, and the letter, um, the keeper of the king's forester park, he said in verse eight, he said, can he give me some timber? So here's the provision. Here's the materials that are needed. So if you're thinking, how will I, and I, I just go open a business or get a new job or, or uh, build a house. I mean, so many people are doing different things. Do that Bible study group. How will I do that? How will I make that happen? 
God will set you up for this. Right there, he got the time to do it. Even the timber, the material was given. Okay, the beams for the gates, the fortresses for the temple, all that was already taken care of. And the king granted what he asked, and then he gave God the glory. He said, for the good hand of God is upon me. So you see, he's realizing God's using man, but it was God who used man to bless me. So you see, that's, that's always having an awareness that God is going before you to make a way. Verse 9, then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. So he's given him provision. He's given him permission to go. And he even sent the king's men, his men, for his protection. So he's got protection. He's got provision. Um, he's got um, the okay, the time. Everything he needed was set in order. But he took the time to get a plan. He didn't just rush off. And so today's main lesson, because the next we're going to end with <clears throat> might. We're going to end with you've got a plan, now you need to carry it out. But today our, the camping is on where in your life is God saying, I need you to get a plan. I need you to get a plan. Okay, so... Um, so we're going to go on to verse 11. Let me read 11 and 12. So it, he came to Jerusalem. So he got through all these barricades, if you will. He got to the place where he was going to build the wall, the wall. And it says he came to Jerusalem. He'd been there three days. So he didn't just rush right in. I got the king's men with me. I'm about to take over. I'm, you know, None of that. Then I arose in the night, okay, in the night. Now, it didn't say he just arose or, and then I went to check out. So you want to really pay attention to the scripture. And what did he do that he did it in night while everybody was sleeping? Um, and I had a few men with me, not the whole crew. Because you remember, just like Jesus went into healing, he only took three. Because he didn't need any naysayers. Okay, it's the, it's the same thing in our life. Or just like Mary, she knew the truth and she held that close to her heart. Timing is everything. He was still investigating and getting his plan. And he did not tell everybody what they were doing because he wanted to investigate it first. And he didn't want any naysayers. He took a few men. So you see, he did it at night when the people weren't there. He's got very few men. So even in your own life, you have your dreams and your goals. You don't just share them on Facebook. Okay, that's not, you don't share with everybody. You don't share them sometimes with the naysayers in your life. And sometimes that can even be your parents. Okay, you share them with somebody that can pray into them with you and not go, what are you thinking? Oh my God. No. Okay. Let's take this to the Lord. You, you share them with people that will speak life and faith over them that will help you, um, fulfill that purpose and dream, not talk you out of it because of their own issues. Okay. That's about as simple as I could say. <laughs> um, so he told no one what God had put in his heart because it wasn't time yet. And he went out at night. Okay. Verse 13. And he started investigating. He investigated every area of the wall. So he was developing his plan. Who's positioned there? And if you read the scriptures, I'm not going to read them due to time. But um, but basically what he was doing is he was, if you go through chapter 3, it's going to show you that there were all these gates. If scripture calls out every gate and who was doing what at that gate, it means this is in a whole chapter. It means that it had it warranted being putting in the scriptures. So it shows us that every detail was looked at. Every person involved was looked at before he started the work. Okay. Planning is imperative. Now, so is carrying it out. All these pieces, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay. We learned about that. And they were on a plan and wise counsel and then might, which is going to be carrying it out. They hold hands, but you do the plan and the council before you do the carrying out. There's an order here. So he went in, out in the night with a few men and he looked at every gate and he studied who would be there, who, what, who would be doing the work, and he got an assessment of it. Okay, so then, he, so then I'm going to just read this and we'll read some other verses. So I'm on verse 18. And this is 2.18 in Nehemiah. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was on me for good, and also the words which the king had spoken. So he's testifying. 
okay? Because your testimony, people are encouraged by the word of your testimony. So he's testifying to him. And he said, let us raise up and build. So now he's speaking life and faith into them. So he's used the testimony and he's um, encouraging them, you know, by saying, let us, let's get, let's get together. So those are key things. You're going to need somebody when you get a plan and you start to walk it out. You're going to need somebody that can speak life and that can, on a bad day when the, it's in the natural, it's not looking like it's going to take place. They can say, oh, no, we're building. You're moving forward. I believe I'm, I got you covered. I'm going to pray for you. So let us rise up and build. So they strengthen their hands for their good work. Verse 19, if you remember, we kind of started this. We've been talked about consecrating your hands unto the Lord. He gives you the ability to get wealth. Everything my hand touches shall prosper. We did. We talked about that, I know, in this little group, but I, and just a little bit on online, but I want to just say, it, it says right here, strengthen their hands for the good work. It didn't say strengthen our bodies or our minds, or our spirits, our hands, okay? They were fixing how to put their hands to something. Like that's what the action piece is going to take. Like you got to get up and go and 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 to do something with it. Um. So then, okay. So then people started laughing and despised them, and and I answered them. So when he had a naysayer, because see, he now is getting his plan. He kind of knows. He's already seen the Lord move. He's got the king. He's got the steps in all in order. Then somebody laughs at him. And he's, and so verse 20, 220. And I answer them, the God of heaven will prosper us. When you know that God, you've heard from the Lord. That's the wisdom part. And you know. And you have done your due diligence. Then you can say with confidence, I know my God is going to prosper us. Therefore, his, we, his servants, will arise and build, but you have no portion or right or memorial in Jerusalem. So basically, he's just prophesying, we're about to build this wall. My God will prosper us. Now, he's, that's a faith statement. That's a prophetic faith statement. So once you get a plan for something and you know that now I can share it because I'm ready to, the mic part's coming, the next piece. Then you know at that point with confidence that you can say, I know my God's going to prosper me. Because sometimes prospering can look different, you know, but you know you will prosper, period. Okay, so now we're going to close with looking up. So remember, we're talking about a plan, getting a plan. We're going to look up these five scriptures. We'll start with Luke 14, 28. Now I'm just going to read through these. And you can, what I'd love for you to do is just, Read through them by yourself in your quiet time and let the Lord minister specifically. What does that mean to me? What, how does that connect to my life? I love this first one. It's so um, just logical. Just, so it's 1528. For which of you wishing to build a form building does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see whether he has sufficient means to finish it? So basically, you, that he's talking specifically about money. Do you have enough money to finish building something? But it can be, do you have enough people on board? Has God given you the permission to start yet? I mean, we don't, it can be a lot of things, reasons. Do you, have you calculated, do you have the materials? See, he had the materials. The king had, have you calculated that you can get this job done? That's putting pencil to paper. That's simple as that. Proverbs, and look, you can read on because it, it breaks that out, but I'm just going to read the, just a little highlight. Proverbs 16, 9. 16. Okay, what, I'm going to read it, and then I want to see what somebody else's version says because I'm reading out of, um, is yours, which version is yours? Heart. Oh. Okay, I, th I thought that. What version is King James? Uh, New King James. Okay, wow. I love yours. I like yours better. Mine says a man's, okay, verse, uh, Proverbs 16, 9, a man's mind, with a man's mind, he plans his way. But the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. Now, the King James says with a man's heart, he plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. 
Now, the reason I love that, and I thought that this morning, I, that's why I asked you, mm -hmm. because it's one thing you renew your mind with the word, where your spirit or your heart, remember, understanding heart is where the wisdom is dropped into. The spirit of God is where the spirit of God is. In New King James, it says, with a man's spirit, he plans. That's even better because that's with your mind, your logical thinking, and the spirit of God, the revelation he's given you, the desire placed in your heart. Because the things he's placed in you to fulfill. So I would say a man's mind and spirit plans. But then God directs his path or his steps. I love that one right there. Okay, um, Proverbs fifteen twenty two. So just one page over. Okay, this one, like this just so good with what we're just studying. Where there is no counsel... Okay, purpose of counsel now, you know, remember, is plans and counselors. Where there is no counsel, purposes are frustrated. Hmm. But with many counselors, they are accomplished. Okay, that is just good right there. It's self, like, get this in the order of what God's building in your life. Proverbs eleven fourteen. No, I'm sorry, yeah, eleven fourteen. Okay, where no wise guidance is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So let's say, um, okay, so no wise guidance, people fall. But the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So let's say the multitude of people that are praying over this, wise counselors, um, and are good planning, there is safety. Okay? I noticed in both of them you read, they have the word plural. Many but advisors. Advisors versus you said, one. You just said multitude. Oh, that's good. Okay, so somebody's just sharing that it's many. Like, it's not just one. That's good because it sometimes people will give you counsel from their perspective. Every Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Everybody that speaks into your life is speaking from their heart. It's very hard for a person to be neutral. Now, people can be neutral because I, I practice that a lot because I do a lot of coaching and I have to stay neutral because each person's answer is different and because I don't want to interject what I th personally would do or think or because God does things different in everybody's life. And so this is a really key point. Thanks for bringing that up, that you really don't want to invest all your decisions in one person. First of all, you want, of course, the Lord first. But when you are looking for wise counsel, counsel, it's best that you have one or two because they're going to speak to you from their filter. It's just humanism. <laughs> so um, it's almost like a way of confirmation. Yes. Once they confirmation each other what they're saying. That's good. Okay, that's good. Um, confirming words. So like sometimes when you get a word or you get a plan, then the thir a third person could actually be the confirming word. That especially if they're not talking in the same group at the same time, they may even be the confirming word. So that's a very good point here, that it's not one person. You never want to, um, you certainly would have your one person, okay? Like your spouse or your dearest friend, because they know everything about you. But you would also take, it's the Lord gets the last say, and it's okay to have the spouse and a best friend. Or you see what I'm saying? Or two friends, if you whatever that looks like, or a friend and a, 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 a pastor, whatever that looks like for you. But the two or more is better. Okay, that's that's a really good point. Okay, so then the next one is Jeremiah 29:11. I think everybody knows that. Um, actually, I'm gonna go to Jeremiah 10:23 first, and then we'll go to 20. Um, So Jeremiah 10, 23, and then we're going to go to our famous one we love. Okay, 10, 23. Oh, Lord, pleads Jeremiah in the name of the people. Okay, I love this because you see he's, in, he's pleading for his people. That was a key thing in this whole thing that the motive of your heart before the Lord is so important when you're considering others. Um, I know that the determination of the way of a man is not in himself, but is it is not in man, even a strong man, to direct his own steps. 
So basically what it's saying here, he's crying out and he's saying, I realize how much we need you, Lord, to direct our path, to tell us our plan, to help us get an understanding. And this is what I love. Everybody, so now go to 29 and 11. I love how everybody loves this verse. For I know, okay, God knows the plans that he has for us, says the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. My thoughts and the plans of welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope and your final out outcome. So this is the thing. God knows the plans, okay? But it doesn't say we know them. That's what I'm always like. Well, that's great. God can know them forever. It's, Lord, show me the plans you have for me. I need the download. I need to know the plans. Because if he knows them and we never sit with him or ask him or start investigating those plans, he may know them until we see him. Mm. We need to investigate what are those plans, Lord God. Develop those in me. Give me a dream. Give me a vision. So that I can walk in this. I can make my plans. I can be courageous. Give me the plan that you have for me. In Jesus' name. Okay. Um, Makes me think of Jeremiah 33. 3. Secrets are fenced in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ask and I'll give you. That's good. Okay, so we're going to close on Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, in Jeremiah 3, 3, 3, 3, she was just saying, you know, give me the secrets that are fenced in. He wants to give us everything. He just has to give it according to how we can, um, how we can steward it so that it won't be too weighty for us to, to carry. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would minister to each of us the plans you have, Lord. That we wouldn't, wouldn't just go about our own plans, Lord, but that our plans would line up with your plans. And then, Lord, we would start putting our natural and you would put your miraculous to it, Lord, that we would stand and say, this was my plan, but this is what God did. Ephesians 3, 20, that you can do a measure more than we can even imagine. But Lord, let us imagine. Let us get a vision. Let us write it down. Let us make a plan. And then Lord, let us sit before you and let your plan mesh with our plan. Let your plan um, and desires become ours so that we can walk out the things that you purposed for us, that you gave us the anointing for to walk out on this earth, oh God. So Lord, we just praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. amen.